only around three or four Celsius for some in the southeast corner. And those temperature contrasts will continue into Tuesday, by which time Nagat and Roger, parts of eastern Scotland could be as high as 14 degrees. Back to both. Matt, thanks. Speak to you later. Now, former munitions worker Bessie Allen worked in a weapons factory in Boston Spa during the Second World War. The 102-year-old has been speaking to the BBC as part of the We Were There project, which aims to document the stories of all surviving veterans by 2025. And she said the work was dangerous, but she is proud of the part she played when helping to defeat Nazi Germany. We knew it was very important work. It was secret. A former munitionette who worked with deadly explosives during World War II. That's me. <laughs> Hello, I'm Bessie Allen and I am 102. I was 19 years old and I was making weapons that were going to help the Allied forces win the war. I do realise now what a dangerous job it was when I think about it. People did have accidents. They, they could lo lose their hands or their, or their eyesight. They did lose their life in some factories. So what did you do to those then, Bess? Put the projectile in the top. Right, in each one of them? Yeah. I think it's about time people like Bessie were recognised. Everyone else, the land girls and everybody else has been recognised, but not the civilians, so that would be nice. My name is Jean Jarvis and I'm proud to be Bessie's friend. The factory was called Royal Ordinance Factory at Boston's Spa. I worked there, there from 1941 to 1945. When I think about World War II now, I remember that I was doing very important work and lot, lots of people were like me. We didn't wear a uniform, so we weren't acknowledged. We wore a red turban and that meant that we were working among the most dangerous substances. It was powder called CE and it tended to make your skin yellow. It didn't come off with ordinary soap. It didn't come off with anything. It just had to wear off. I'm very proud of you, Bess, because you're a special lady. She's very modest. She doesn't emphasise how uh, dangerous it was. I don't think they could have won the war without people like us. It's, it's really forgotten about. We haven't had any recognition for what we did. She's amazing, isn't she? Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. That was Bessie, former munitions worker Bessie Allen. That film was done by Nicola Reese. Perhaps you, or someone you know, have a story to share about World War II. Now, ahead of its 80th anniversary in 2025. Yes, the BBC is trying to gather as many first-hand accounts from surviving veterans as possible to preserve them for future generations. So important to hear the stories in the words of the people who were there, um, you can email BBC Breakfast, uh, the, there's the email address, uh, or get in touch via the BBC News website. We would love to hear from you. Or if you know somebody who's got a story to share. I used to be, I had great aunts that were alive when I was younger, and I used to listen to their stories and it's hear great. them talk about things. And it's the way to pass the stories down the generations. Never forget. Nine minutes to nine. Now. Here's something a bit different. For decades, David Sutherland illustrated the Beano's Bash Street Kids and Dennis the Menace, creating childhood memories for so many. Well, following his death at the age of 89, the editor of the children's comic has described him as the single most important illustrator in Beano history. Eileen Clark's been looking back at a life well drawn. I've always enjoyed drawing, even from a young lad. When I was young, I used to, my dad used to buy me the dandy the Beano. And I didn't think that I would be drawing for the, for the Beano. And he drew these famous comic strips in the Beano for 60 years. David Sutherland was responsible for more than a thousand Dennis the Menace adventures and he'd drawn the Bash Street Kids every week from 1962 till last month. I usually get the meat of the story comes from the script. But the writer's script was always just the starting point. The bits that are the best bits that you see when you've written something are the extra bits that they've added in. 
And they did that every single time for 60 years. One of the very talented writers at the time said, the Bass Street Kids class is infested with mice. In the frame of the strip that had that, David had drawn 300 separate mice. And every single one had a different facial expression. 300 different facial expressions on tiny little mice. And uh, and we said, why did you do that? And he says, I just love drawing animals. And he, he just loved drawing. And he, he's done it his whole life and uh, done it brilliantly. So how much did we all love the Beano when we were growing up? I um, I used to think of Dennis the Menace as an excuse for my behaviour. So <laughs> any time I did something bad, I was like, I'm just being a menace. And I thought, I think I thought that was like a good thing. Yeah, you look at it now and you think back of the fun times you had yeah. as a kid and when... You know, you didn't have to go to work and do other activities. You just played and read cartoons and tried to climb the trees. I would say the Bass Street Kids is probably one of the best ones. Didn't have cell phones and all that stuff, and we didn't have. We never even had TV until 1958. You know, so all those things were good for us, you know, for young kids. Who are your favourites? Probably Dennis and Nasha and Minnie the Minx. He's actually got copies of his dad's Beano from when he was a kid, so that's what got him into it. So he does it, he really likes them. How good is it to see that again? Yeah, it's really nice. Oh, we'll get one for later. Have you done the train name? <laughs> David Sutherland's final comic strip will appear in the Beano next week. Aileen Clark, BBC News, Glasgow. Well, let's uh, talk to the current Dennis and Nasha illustrator, the cartoonist Nigel Parkinson. See, he's here. Tell us more about David Sutherland. I mean, what was it that made him, in your opinion, as a fellow professional, that, that made him so extraordinary? Well, he could draw in any style, and he was meticulous. His line work was beautiful. But one of the things I liked about him was that he always came away having enjoyed what he'd done. Mm. And you know, I think that's very important that you enjoy what you what you're reading in a comic. That's what it's for, isn't it? You know? Seeing the way he does it, though, yes, painstaking, the Definitely. paint. Has it has technology changed things, or is the way David did it still the way well, that I, it's done? I actually still use the exact same pencil that he's using. That, funnily enough, uh, and I drew it the same way. I uh, draw it on a piece of paper. Then it becomes a little bit more computerized, a bit more technical. But it, basically, I'm drawing exactly the same way he did. I didn't know there were such things as ghost artists. Oh, yes, ghost Explain artists. Explain a ghost artist to me. Well, if the regular illustrator for a strip is uh, on holiday, <laughs> that doesn't happen very often, or is sick or decides to move, or notice there's been a change. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what Dave started as, and what I started as. In fact, I've drawn, I've ghosted Dave. Uh, I did a few Bash Street Kids when he, uh, well, that was me, <laughs> uh, when... Uh, <laughs> When he, he retired uh, many years ago, and then he liked, and I did the Bash Street Kids for him for a few months, but he enjoyed drawing so much that he came back as a freelancer. What did he say about your ghost artistry? <laughs> oh, he, he didn't, he just said I was very good. <laughs> but we, uh, we had a brief chat once about it, and we were just really talking about uh, what a great job it is to have, to be drawing all day and uh, enjoying what you're doing and making other people enjoy it. In fact, uh, I've got to say about Dave, he worked for 60 years on Bash Street Kids mm -hmm. and over 60 years on the Beano, uh, every week almost. Mm -hmm. And the Beano's uh, main claim to fame is that it employed Dave Sutherland <laughs> because every time you think of the Beano, and we've all read it, uh, whether you're a big fan or not, it, you think of Dave Sutherland's art, that's what the image you have in your mind, that's the Beano look. Yeah. And he was he was given an OBE, wasn't he, in the New Year's Honours, yes. King's New Year's Honours. Right. Um, and I think that this final, I, I don't know if, it's, if, if, if his byline has appeared with, with the letters OBE yet. Yeah, yes. no, so they will, in his final, Yes. so he never actually got to go to the palace to receive no. his, his accolade. But. It, that, that was a real shame, but it was, it was great that he got that accolade. It was great that he's recognised as being so important. It's going to make this next edition a real collector's item. It really will. David Sutherland, OBE. And of course, OBE is three of the five letters of Beano, don't forget. <laughs> indeed, indeed. <laughs> you should all have one. Oh, thank what you. is the process in terms of do you, you get the script and you know the words first yes. and then who do you how much freedom do you have in terms of portraying the pictures well we don't have a lot of freedom because it's a big uh, it's a big thing to be you know, there's a lot of people involved and Dennis who I draw every week and that um, uh, Dave did for about 20 or 30 years <laughs> just you know yeah. 20 or 30 years well uh, is a, is a 
is a big character and it needs to look the same every week and it mm. needs to be fresh as well, which it's quite a thing to do, you know, to make it look the same but different every week. Uh, I get a script from the writer, Nigel Octoluni, and uh, he's, he's very good because he's a cartoonist as well, so he understands how to send you a script, which is as little drawings, which is nice. Uh -huh. And then I make it look like Dennis and Nasher. Uh, but it's the same, really, as if, if you read an, an old script. Like we, I think we might have seen uh, Dave working from a typed one. You know, it makes no difference. Uh, you get the script. If it's a good script, you do a good job. If it's not quite as good a script, you make it as good as you can with the drawings. And so one page, how long does that take you? Oh, well, it depends what's on it. Oh. Uh, I mean, the, you sort of think that where I had um, a Bash Street kids where I had them all in, in a flooded cr classroom mm. on desks, and that took ages. But generally speaking, you do two pages a day, something like that. Gosh. Wow. It's pain, painstaking work. So you, you said about the way, it, so you took over doing Dennis the Menace, who, yes. for me, Dennis the Menace is, is the bee now. Um, what happens now to the Bash Street Kids? Will Will after this last co Dave's last column goes in, his last mm -hmm. cartoon goes in, will people notice a change? Um, well, it depends who they get to do it. I don't know who's going to do the Bash Street Kids, uh, but if they get someone who's a good ghost artist, probably won't notice. But the, there have been other people who've drawn the Bash Street Kids from time to time, filling in, and uh, we'll probably uh, find out in a couple of weeks' time. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I will say, though, that uh, 60 years drawing one strip is a fantastic achievement. Isn't it? And everyone loved Dave. He was such a, a kindly gentleman. He was a real gentleman. Uh, every inch a gentleman. And he was over six foot, so it's quite a lot of gentlemen. He was a nice fella. It's oh, not a good way to leave it. Nice way to remember him. Thank yeah. you so much, Nigel. Nigel thank Parkinson, thank you. Stay with us. Headlines are on the way. Oh, I'm just in a warehouse! We are back, and our challenge is a bigger than ever.